John here guys and welcome back to the FPV beginner series where you learn all about how drones work, how to build a drone and what each of the necessary items to fly a drone are and today we're talking about the transmitter and receiver system that you need in order to control your drone. Now your transmitter or your radio or your controller are all of the same things. So you may be tempted uh, from being in a gaming background to call this a controller, which it kind of is, but technically the right term for it is a transmitter. Now this is the FR Sky X9D Plus Special Edition, the carbon fiber version, uh, but there are a variety of radio options out on the market. You've seen me review these other ones like the X9 Lite, which is kind of the baby version of this thing right here. And of course my long-standing favorite radio, the QX7S, also carbon fiber edition. So I have all the different flavors. And what these do is, it's very simple, it is the controller to your drone where you input your stick commands in order to transmit your signal to the receiver. Here is a receiver. This is a FR Sky XM Plus receiver, which is installed in your um, drone or quadcopter. This has three wires, power ground and signal that we went over in the last overview video. That connects to your flight controller. So this transmits your stick commands so if I move my left stick up, that is throttle up. If I move my right stick forward, that is gonna be pitch down. So in combination, that could make me go forward at a very high, fast rate, especially if I have stick all the way up to the top, full throttle. That sends that signal to your receiver, which then relays it to your flight controller, which tells your quadcopter what to do. Now, by default, all of these three radios use a 2.4 gigahertz transmission uh, system. These, um, with this receiver, use a protocol that is called SBUS, that is FR Skies. There are other protocols out there. There is Spectrum, there is iBus, which is Fly Sky, if you've ever heard of that. And also there are a couple of other options in the 900 megahertz range. Most notably is Team Black Sheep's Crossfire. Crossfire. Uh, protocol. Now that is a special protocol that transmits a 900 megahertz signal rather than 2.4 gigahertz. And what that allows you to do with their special um, protocol system is to have a longer range and a potentially lower latency. FR Sky also has their own version of that, which has a little um, module that plugs in into the back. And that is the R9 system. That is their 900 megahertz system. Now, I'm not going to talk about which one is better or anything like that. Go watch another video for that. This is just how does this stuff work. So the first thing that you do when you have your transmitter welcome is to OpenTX. it's going to tell you welcome to OpenTX. That is the open source Data software warning. that a lot. Switch warning. Oh my gosh. <laughs> OpenTX. That is the software that a lot of these FR Sky radios run. Radio yeah. antenna defective. That is the software solution that a lot of these um, radios run and also the jumper series of radios run this as well, as well as several others. Now, um, Spectrum is gonna have their own, Futaba is gonna have their own. And what you do in the radio is first you have to set up all of your switches. There are so many switches on this X9D and you can see on these other ones, there's a little bit fewer switches. I personally only ever use three switches and the three switches that I like to use are um, ones on the front. I always use my leftmost switch as my mode switch. So if it's all the way up in its home position, that I default that to auto level. I just use that on all my models. I don't ever actually fly that way, but I use it and if I ever want to test hover or something like that, it just keeps it simple. And then down for me is where I put my mode assignment to acro which is full manual uh, and then i have my arm switch you always want to have arm on a switch you want to be really used to having your thumb very close to that at all times so if you ever get into trouble get into a crash get into falling you want to just flip that off that will 
tell your quad to cut all the motors fall from the sky. So if you're ever in a situation where you need to do that, always be used to hitting that arm switch as fast as possible. Um, and then of course, the corresponding setup to this is on your flight controller. In Betaflight, you'll want to assign the correct receiver protocol on there. If you have the right receiver protocol, when you have your radio and your receiver bound, watch any of these other videos on how to do that step. But the shorthand for how to bind it is normally you hold the bind button on this receiver. It's on here. When it's in your quadcopter, as you are plugging in a battery for FR Sky receivers, that will put it into bind mode. You'll see it blinking. Then you go onto your radio, select a model that you want to assign to this in the radio and then go into bind mode. It'll start chirping, hit okay, and then it should be bound. The way that you check is when you plug a battery in, on these receivers, the light will be a solid green that indicates that you have a current active bound connection to the receiver. Um, so what is a good place to start? I recommend some of the lower priced radios um, to get anyone started, the X9 Lite Pro, that has the hall sensor gimbals is a really good option. Although as mentioned in the review of this, it doesn't do D8. Click the little link in the corner if you wanna go watch that review. And that's it, short and simple guys. Transmitter is your radio, receiver receives the signals that allows you to do the commands. Your switches can also be used for a variety of other things. There is something called pit switch, which is a new functionality in the last year or so that allows you to kill the power to your video transmitter. Why would you want to do that? Your video transmitter can get very hot. And if you're sitting on the line in a race or if you're sitting out in the field, you don't want to go and get your quadcopter, but you don't want your video transmitter to overheat itself. There's no air flowing. If you're not flying, if it's sitting there, you can have that on a switch to where you can turn that video transmitter power off so it does not overheat. You can also do other cool things like have different models on a switch for like relay type racing, team racing. Um, that's kind of an advanced feature. So if you're interested in that, go look at that. But pretty simple guys. Hopefully this will help you get up in the air. Remember to stay tuned to all of the future releases in the beginner series. And if you haven't watched the ones previously about flight controllers, about how to set up a quad, about what does what, go check those out. Let me know in the comments what the next beginner series should be. Uh, what are the topics that you guys want to know the most about? And I will cover them for you. Thanks, guys.